Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another video. It's your host, Rising Oblivion, guys. And today, we have a pretty cool topic, and this is something that I've been sitting on for quite a long time, and it is, why didn't Akechi ever get a palace? So, there's a couple of different things that we can go through here in terms of just the development of the game, the way the metaverse works, the way palaces work, who necessarily gets one, is there an age difference, do they have to be an adult? There's a lot of factors that can kind of go into this, but at the end of the day, it is kind of sci-fi and warning there are spoilers in this video not only in the footage but for what i'm about to say and talk about for this game it's going to have to include stuff all the way from the start of the game all the way to the end so fair warning before we really jump into this but let's go over the reasons why akechi might even just have a palace to begin with i mean akechi for the most part i think has one of the biggest body counts of the entire game i mean akechi has killed so many people Haru's dad, Futaba's mom, he is the reason for countless other mental shutdowns. Even going back from two years ago, he kills Futaba's mom, which is two years before F Persona 5 even takes place. So, he's been doing this for quite a long time, and for all we know, he might have been killing all the way from then. He might have been doing this for literally years. He has been a Persona user longer than Joker ever has been. I mean, he's done it multiple years more than Joker has or any of the other characters that we have seen within Persona 5. So, he's been killing multiple people all over Shibuya and honestly causing all these mental breakdowns, shutdowns. You would think if anybody would have a palace, it'd be Akechi. So, you might say, well, Akechi's young. He doesn't get a palace. That doesn't make sense. It's only been adults in the game that get it. Well, that's not necessarily true. Futaba has had a palace. Futaba has her own palace that she goes into, and she is younger than Joker and the rest of the people in the group are. She is at least one year younger than them, so that doesn't quite work. Futaba is technically younger, way younger than Akechi, yet still she has a palace. So that kind of goes against that whole thing. So he fits within the right age. He can have a palace. It is not based off of age, and he's done all of these terrible, terrible things, and he has an ego as well, which doesn't support the case in saying that he might not be able to have a palace either. So, we know the boys cut a lot of people. There is not a factor when it comes to age, and Akechi honestly has one of the bigger egos in the game. Literally, just flat out, if you go through his confidant, he just tells Joker straight up, he's like, dude, I hate you, I don't like you, you're terrible, I kind of own this city, he's the ace detective. You know, they really don't ever let Akechi get away with this whole ego thing, so... Let's go into even more as to why he might not have gotten a palace, and really it comes down to whether or not the Phantom Thieves even would stumble upon it. Would they ever have a reason to do so? So, since the start of the game, Akechi really just seems like a normal detective kind of kid. They don't really know that he's all that bad. He might have had a palace, but would they have even stumbled upon it? Would there have been a reason for them to infiltrate Akechi's palace? Now, obviously, on paper, you see all the killings, you see all the ego, stuff like that, but they don't quite know that something that's going on with him. They don't know that Akechi's done all of these things. I mean, it's quite the big mystery, the reveal that we get that Akechi's been the one doing all of the mental shutdowns, he's been the one killing all the people, making them go insane, giving Shido all the power, which at the end of the day, Akechi plans to kind of off Shido at the end of it and sort of just take over overall. And even though he does have a little bit of, you know, this Anakin moment where he helps the Phantom Thieves in the end and it's all good, he still has done quite a lot and if you play Royal, even after he kind of saves the Phantom Thieves, this dude still has an ego, he's still pretty bad, but let's rewind things a little bit here and go into the point where we find that Morgana and Joker know that Akechi is going to double cross them. It's the whole, you know, pan catchy thing, you know what I'm talking about, the pancakes. Knowing that he could hear Morgana, knowing that he has been a person that can go into the metaverse. We know about this because Morgana figures it out, same with Joker, the rest of the crew eventually then figure it out as well. But the thing is, they're already deep into Shido's palace by the time this even happens, and they're already doing a lot, and they're having this whole battle with Sainijima as well, and they're basically forced because of her and to helping out and bringing down Shido. It all sort of ties up to that. Not only that, they assume Akechi dies within Shido's palace. So there's no reason for them to assume that they should go into Akechi's palace or to change Akechi. The man, seemingly, as far as they know, he's dead. They didn't even need to really do much for him. And not only that, the point of where they have him at, he's not much of a threat anymore. 
Shido is a much huger threat than anybody else could have been. I mean, legally, this guy was trying to bring everything down. They outsmarted Kechi and trying to kill Joker. So, at the end of the day, the Phantom Thieves win. They get away with it. There's no reason to even worry about a Kechi or try to, you know, <laughs> infiltrate a palace with them or anything like that. So, there's no reason for them to even try and really do that. There's no time for him to even assume while he's dead that he should have a palace or something like that. They never say that, which I would hope that the Phantom Thieves would say something like that. It seems like something they should do, but overall, there's really nothing there for them to go against. And even going on into Royal when it comes to Maruki's palace, Maruki's a much bigger threat. There's no reason to change Akechi. Really, the Phantom Thieves only ever go after targets if they have something on them. So if Akechi's about to do something through the whole group and they have a deadline then they'll try to change Akechi but as far as we can see he's trying to help the team out a bit so this might be why this doesn't happen but let's go into development of the Persona game and let's talk about why they might not have done this or if they plan to because little do a lot of people know there actually might have been plans for Akechi to have a palace at least there is some parts of the game that show that he would have one there at least has some evidence shown through some shadow negotiation lines that Akechi was going to be a palace ruler. So yes, a lot of times whenever you see that there is, you know, a wounded shadow or something like that that's on the ground, in order to, you know, capture them, make them a persona for Joker to use, you have to negotiate with them and talk to them. And a lot of times, you might have seen this, maybe you go to Madarami's palace or something like that, a lot of times, if you end up doing the wrong things, you'll say, you know, the shadows will be like, no, get away from me. I'll do anything for Lord Madarame. Something like that. There are negotiation lines from the shadows talking about Akechi in this way. For Lord Akechi. For the ruler Akechi. So it shows that there had been plans. There had been some written lines. However, no voiced lines within the Japanese versions of the game. And I think even some of the US versions of the game that show that Akechi was going to have a palace. There are shadow negotiation lines talking about him, you know, being a ruler of a palace and not wanting to join you. So, at the end of the day, they did plan to have something with Akechi. Possibly, this could have been something that they were going to do with, you know, the Persona 5 Royal thing. However, they went with the Maruki stuff instead and maybe tried to have, you know, Akechi be part of the group then. So, at the end of the day, you don't feel like he's such a bad guy, sort of helping the Phantom Thieves out in the same way. They have a common goal without going into a ton of spoilers for the end of Royal. There might have been a reason why they decided not to have it. Was there any reason for them to have it really beforehand? No. Is there a reason for them to have it into Royal? Well, they're already helping you out with, you know, Dr. Maruki's stuff. So he's kind of already being technically part of the group already and sort of wronging the stuff he's done. Does that make Akechi a good person? No, without a doubt. Akechi definitely still killed all of those people. And you would think if he really, really wanted to go against his wrongs, he would almost support the fake world that Dr. Maruki has done, where everybody's back and everybody's happy. All the people he's killed, Futaba's mom, you know, Mr. Okumura, they're back. You'd think if Akechi wanted any you know, sort of reality to happen, it would be that one, where all the people he has killed have come back. But no, Akechi still has that ego, that ill will. Technically, maybe he should still have one. Who really knows? Akechi still deep down is still a murderer and had killed lots and lots of people. So maybe him sort of helping them through Dr. Maruki stuff is the way of him sort of paying back, I guess you could say. Akechi finally getting, you know, kind of a second wind, I guess you could, uh, you know, say that at least. But if you're a person who just lets Akechi die without, you know, seeing that ending quite yet, you know, if you do the wrong stuff, you don't get, you know, consume me up, Dr. Maruki up, and Akechi's confidants up, you could just see that he dies off and that's the end of the game there. You don't have to worry about it. So adding in two palaces because you've messed up some of the confidant choices would also be kind of bad from a gameplay point of view as well. But let me down down in the comment section below. What do you guys think? Do you think the Dr. Maruki stuff is enough to redeem Akechi? Should he have his own palace? Do you think there's still enough evil within him that he deserves to have one? Let me know down in the comment section below. Like this video if you like seeing more videos like these. As always, I will keep you all up to date on everything. Atlas, Shimagami Tensei, Persona. I will see you in the next video. Thank you all so much for watching.